Welcome everyone to a casted game for Stormgate. And today, spawning in the southwest corner of the map, playing in blue, we got 3DB playing as the Vanguard faction. And his opponent in the northeast, playing in red, we've got Lualis playing as the Infernal Host. Welcome everyone to Broken Crown Hinterlands. That's the map for today, and the Doggo moving out across as they usually do, looking to find out exactly what the Infernal Host are up to. It's going to be an interesting one. Both players, obviously, very highly ranked and highly skilled. Doggo going to spot out the Conclave opening for the Infernal Host. The question is whether it will be a Conclave with a Gaunt and then into a second base expansion for the Infernals. Could be an option. No Iron Vault being placed just yet. Just pushing away that dog as much as possible. Now bear in mind, on the patch that this game is casted on, it's quite likely we'll see multiple dogs. There it is. There's the second one coming out for 3DB and quite likely to drop a Biokinetics Lurb for the Virilium Claws upgrade, which adds an additional 16 damage to light units. And that includes the imp workers here, although he might not even need the damage. Might get one kill here. Got to be careful here, the Infernal Host. Could possibly drop down a meat farm to add some population supply. Looks like that's the case and going to save that imp worker. Well, I mean, the imp worker gets sacrificed either way. At least he gets sacrificed for a better cause than just dying. And he's actually going to be getting a uh, biokinetics lab building with four workers. Really rushing it down and 3DB dancing around with his doggos. Looking to try and snipe out the gaunt. Might actually get it. Going to micro back one of his weakened dogs. And possibly even the second, he will save that one as well. And uh, manages to get away with the third one as well. So keeping them alive and kicking. Could actually take the flower and heal on up. Be surprised if he doesn't. And it is going to be a second base expansion here for the Infernal. No real way to punish that just now. Although give it some time. In the next 5-10 minutes, it could be a bit exposed here for the Infernals. And with the Biokinetics Lab now running, it looks like he is going to get the Virilium Claws. That will actually help him get some of the creep camps. Um, so whilst he might be up against some brutes before too long, he's going to be able to at least take the creep camps with the Brilliant Claws upgrade with the doggos. It's going to be a second base expansion here for 3db as well. Plenty of bobs heading that way to get that underway and built. I wonder if he's going to sell the Biokinetics Lab by the way. It can be done quite commonly by the Vanguard. We'll have to see because he could use that Luminite elsewhere. Possibly for a Sentry Outpost. There it is. It is actually going to be sacrificed and salvaged. That's a nice way to play the Vanguard at times. You can use that Luminite elsewhere. Maybe for a cheeky early third base expansion. Pretty greedy, but he's getting a lot of the resource camps on the map, and that's going to help him get there. But he could just opt for, you know, developing a bit of an uh, economy, and then into Lancers, maybe. Does mean that Exos will be a bit delayed, so he probably is playing more of the greedy approach, because you need the Biokinetics Lab in order to be able to train Exos. But we'll have to see what he exactly has in mind. It does feel like it's going to be a third base for the Vanguard, actually, because he's, um, you know, he's moved away from the Biokinetics Lab. He hasn't really invested into too many more units. No Sentry Outposts, and there it is. He's going to send the bobs there. Five of them. It's quite likely to overcharge and build that command post. And it's going to go for that third base. It's going to be uh, expansive and greedy a little bit. Now, the positioning of that is not the most ideal in terms of efficiency. You really do want the uh, command post essentially in line with the Luminite node to make it most efficient in terms of gathering. But he might be placing it very intently and positionally because it's very greedy play to go for a third base like this. So maybe it's going to help him wall up and protect his economy. He's going to get the vision camp as well. So this actually really helps fund that third base. So was this greedy in a way? Well, ultimately, it feels like he can achieve that because there's not much pressure coming on the map for the Infernal Host. Although that might change soon now that he's got an Iron Vault and also that Conclave. Nicely well protected at home. Two Brutes and a couple of Gaunts. But he's staying home for now, just obviously cautious about the Dog Rush. Of which there are four still on the field, so be keeping them alive. And it's going to keep an eye on this, exactly where the enemy's coming. They're coming now, so that third base could be under pressure. Might need to get some sentry outposts and defend. So in the next sort of five, six minutes, it's going to be the vanguard defending and the infernal pushing. Loses a, a little doggo there, unfortunately, and those are pretty weak. Might have to come back and repair or not. So interesting opening so far. And really, the Infernal kind of need to push here. I don't know if he knows about the third base. I think once he does know about it, he'll st start to put some pressure. He's going to get two sentry outposts. He needs to put some lances in there if he can. There it is. There's a the lance popping out. Two barracks. Or triple barracks, actually, because he had one back at home and on the primary. And does have the bustle cannon, which will be helpful. There's not enough units here, really, for the Infernals to pressurize that. If he does try and attack it, well, then the bobs will come out and heal. The Fiend, though, keeping an eye on that base area, but... Obviously, he's already got three bases, so it's unlikely to have a fourth at this stage. But he's, he is putting some pressure. Now that Bob being pulled back, the one the weak... Um, he's going to pull the other weak one as well, which is good. He's got two sentry outposts. and Now two buzzsaw cannons makes it very difficult to pressurize for the Infernals. 
So nice, expansive, greedy play by B. And behind this, well, the Infernals are opting for a third base themselves as well. But bear in mind, unlike the Vanguard, the Infernal can't power build their bases. So he's going to have to wait. He's just going to have to wait for that shrine to come up. And then start to make some units. Having said that though, the Infernals do have a really quite nice top bar ability. That allows them to recharge the charges that they have on their shrines or production buildings. And so when he uses that, it can pump out pimp, uh, imps. Pimps? That's not really what I was looking for. Either way, nice slip of the tongue. But the uh, two brutes backing away now. In fact, there's going to be four brutes and three gaunts. That's going to be more than enough to deal with the lancers. But lancers are a great unit for the vanguard, i got to say. Because especially with the kinetic redirection upgrade from the biokinetics lab. Increases their attack speed, increases their movement speed by 5% every time they hit, up to a maximum of 50%. And 50% is a lot. Makes them move very fast and helps them dictate the terms of an engagement. There is a biokinetics lab, by the way, so I, that's got to be kinetic redirection, right? There's got to be that upgrade for the Vanguard. Alright, getting a shroud stone in the third base just to make sure nice and protected, but... I've got to say, whilst we're expecting the Infernals to pack a punch in the sort of 5-6 to six minute mark, they haven't really been able to achieve too much. And it came down to having two sentry outposts with the bustle cannon. And it really helped B defend that position. And now he's looking to get the speed camps as well. Really getting the minimap objectives really nicely under his belt here, B. We'll see what the Infernal Host could be opting for. Now, six and a half minutes, you kind of expect the Infernal Host to be on tier two. Maybe even going for a Doombringer drop. It can be quite common. Possibly even some Magmadons could be teched into. More barracks. So it looks like the Vanguard really opting for the bio route. You know, getting Lancers, getting Exos. Already got the dogs that he needed from the beginning of the game. And it is going to be a drop here with the, the Doomringer. But 3DB will spot that. He'll know it's coming. He will see it coming. He's going to head away back. And just maybe hold on for now before he looks to try and be a bit too aggressive. And Wait, is that double? It's going to be a double Doombringer drop. That's actually fascinating. We often see it once. But uh, Lual is going for a second. And that's going to be a nice distraction technique actually on the west side. B's probably thinking, oh, well, it's going to come on the Doombring on the west side. I've got my eyes on it, but little does he know. He's going to go for a fourth base, and that's going to be punished, actually. I think if he spots that, he will spot it now. That's going to be a big punishment. Gaunt's there. They're going to be taking out a lot of the bobs and causing fiends to pop out, although the brutes didn't get too close. In fact, doesn't actually get a bob. The overcharge helped him out so much. as 100 armor to those bobs, and the lancers are heading that position now. Doombring are going to hightail out of it, but he has... Wasted a lot of time for these bobs. Does get one of them. Spawns a fiend because of it. And uh, the bobs are going to heal up on each other. Might as well. It is free. They don't have to use any resources to heal up. Does uh, now get some exos in the area. But there's the second doom bringer drop from the west side this time. Gaunt's pushing that way. Does take out one unit and gets a fiend. But two exos will do work on that. And Lance is heading that position once again. Maybe he's getting some value on the right side though. Now he split up his army B. He had enough to deal with both actually. That's actually kind of crazy. He had army to deal with both Doombringer drops. and Well, nice try there by Lee Wallace, but hasn't really worked out for him as at least as much as he would have wanted to. The right side, looking to still do some damage, but I think he might have to back out of there. There's not too much he can achieve with the Lancers there. The Gaunts kind of tickle them, though he might be taking out some of the book now. No, he has to back away, really. Kind of have to be careful. He does have quite a decent number of units in the middle of the map, looking to get the resource camps level two. It's his turn to get the resources on the map. It's going to be uh, Doom... Bring a dropping on those lancers. Look at the kinetic redirection though. Look how fast they are. That goes chomping at it. He might lose the Doombringer though if he's not careful. He's really focusing on it. 3DB does take it out. Kind of huge. Loses the white health because of it. Or at least the shroud. Oh, those brutes. They, they thought about it, but he can't really. Those lancers with the kinetic redirection now looking really good. They're supercharged with the exos behind them as well. Lancers going to be body blocking. Taking out another brute. Great value. But three Magmadons could look to charge. And there's another Doombringer drop there on the primary. Looks like Biokinetics Labs are searching something for the Vanguard. And he should get a lot of idle time caused. I mean, this is not great for B. Like, yeah, he will lose the units in the end, the uh, the Infernals, but he caused a lot of idle time. Which is certainly handy. On the front lines, though, there's so many Lancers. One Magmadon gets absolutely taken apart by the Exos. Four Magmadons. Will he look to charge us? I think he will, actually. He looks to trample in. Now, it doesn't have the Demon Hoof ability, which would stun these units. Instead, he has to rely on just to trample damage. And he's trampling. But the Lancers tank most of it pretty well. Gets a couple of Fiends. But, yeah, you know, I think B will be okay with just retreating from this position. He's got a lot of map control now because of this. And that fourth base looks like it is going to be built once again. There it is. 
Now, I'm not sure why he deleted that, actually. So, uh, there has been a bug or two recently where things haven't been building if they've been under attack. I'm not sure what causes it. Maybe that's what it was in that situation. But either way, it be starts the construction of the fourth base once again. But nice opening. The Vanguard opening up with the Doggos and then getting a bit more greedy. Do bring a drop again. Not for the first time, of course. And this time it's with the Magmadon. Magmadon tramples through and he does have the Demon Hoover ability. You can see it. Stunning those bobs makes it very difficult to retreat. It gets a lot of fiends out of this as well. Great play there by the Infernal Host. Does a lot of damage to the economy, but Exos are in position. Now the Doombringer has to be careful. If the Exos take out the Doombringer, there's going to be no retreat. He does back away in time. Sacrifices the fiends, but that's what the Infernal are used to. Definitely one of those factions that sacrifices their own units for the greater good. At least from their perspective. Do bring up, maybe coming out once again. Infernal Host starting to push forward with a decent number of Magma Dons, a couple of Gaunts, and one Hellborn, which will use a lot of range, of course. 14 range on that guy. And there's the fourth base for him coming out for the Infernal Host. Probably a good idea because obviously he hasn't been, a, he's done damage to B, but he hasn't perhaps done as much as he would have wanted. Another Doom Bringer drop there. A couple of those bobs are pretty weak, but they do back out, although the Magma Don trampling on through, stunning a lot of them, getting a good value. That, 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 that trample from the Magma Don is so good. But he will go down to the Lancers. But it's probably worth it. Probably worth it. Coming around on the east side now. But there's a lot of choke points there. Ah, that's going to be very difficult for the Infernal Host to push in through. I don't think he'll manage it, actually. The Exos will get good value. Perfect fighting in the choke point. Magbadon is trampling on through. and Oh, yeah, he's going to get on top of that. The trouble for the Infernal Host, there's so much production. So many buildings. It's hard to break through with a flat cannon behind. Yeah, I mean, by the time he breaks through maybe one of the barracks, oh, he would have lost a lot of units. I don't think he can really commit to this. Looks like he is. Either way, Doombringer drop comes in on the west side. Again, but he loses it and loses all the units inside as well. Got absolutely sniped by the Exo and B. He's definitely fighting back and winning this last fight. That is for sure. Hellborn's going to be very exposed. It's not really a frontline unit for sure. And look how quickly it gets taken out. Hellborn does have only 200 HP. To put that into some kind of context. Well, I mean, a Spriggan has 200 HP. If you think about the, the Vanguard, well... You know, a Hellboard has less HP than a La Lancer. La Lancer has 240. So, it kind of gives you an idea how squishy they can be. I can tell you what's not squishy, though. Those Magmadons. They can pack a punch. They've got 480 HP and 20 armor, which is the big one, really. Hellboard numbers starting to build up a little bit. It's got three so far. Maybe looking to add more to take advantage of the range. There's going to be a fifth base here for B. Looking to really macro it up and exciting stage of the game because it might be in for a long haul on this one so I hope you guys got some snacks because uh, you know with the macro and the economy for both of these players looking so good I don't think it's going to be ending anytime soon Exo's being pulled off on the west side they have to get good surround coverage Magmadon's trampling through and that's the idea behind the spread by the way of the units it helps deal with the Magmadon's trampling it does get some value from it but he's going to need to back away here you feel B doesn't quite have enough to deal with this although he can always use the range of the Exos has a range of 7, which is absolutely fantastic. The Hellborn kind of counteract it a bit, but they, there's only 3 of them, right? So, he's going to need more than that. Oh, on the west side, Doombringer drop coming on on that 5th base expansion. Pushing the Bob workers away, getting a couple of fiends because of the infest. And that's actually looking pretty good. I mean, the army was caught out of position, but B going to get surrounded on the west side. Just to make sure the uh, the fiends and the infernal host can't retreat, really, from that area. Doombringer going to the primary base this time. Well, he's... He kept on moving. That's the important thing for the Infernals. Kept the army moving. This time, though, would he be able to retreat with it or not? I'm not so sure. Coming on the west side again with the army and the Infernals. I think this time, I don't think he gets out of there. The Exos, yeah, they're going to take out the Doombringer. The Gaunts will die. But he gets some value on the west side. The biggest value of that drop is the fact he's given himself an opportunity to attack this command post. The command post probably will go down. That's 400 resources. Well, actually, he thinks 350 Luminite now. Either way, it's a lot of Luminite. It has just gone to waste. Bob's get us around on the fiends on the right side. He's got a lot of production there on the right side. And that's going to be important to keep alive, of course. Now, I would like to say a very big thank you for everyone supporting the channel, whether it be on Twitch or YouTube. If you've been enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel because, of course, we are having loads more casted content your way. Oh, a lot of those units going down. Gaunt's getting absolutely smashed and he has to back away. But he's got a decent number of reinforcements coming in. Will it be enough to push it away? Looks like it. Although B, he's quite happy with the kinetic redirection. He's going to tank on the front line with Lancers. And they do so well. There's only four Hellborns. 
They're big units, but not enough numbers. It takes out a lot of them. Infest comes out as well. So we'll get a decent number of fiends from that. Lancer line has been taken out mostly, but it's coming in from the east side B. They're going to get a surround, and he might get a good surround on these units. Forcing the infernals back away, down the ramp, down back home. It's a good pushback. All of Magmadons might be charging in from the back, but he can't get close enough, really. Does lose the Magmadons on the front line. That's not a good, a good fight there for the infernals at all. Loses the front line mostly. And the quick draw hustle from the Exos is such a strong upgrade. 25% movement speed when they fire. Or hit something. That movement speed allows them to gap close very quickly. Or even just run away very quickly. Either way. They will dictate the terms of the engagement. Alright, looks like 5th base coming in the northwest for the Infernal Host at some point as well. It's building at least. Lance is coming in. They could attack that front line. Decent number coming in again. That's a lot of Lancers. That's going to help so much. Although the Demon Hoof ability, the Trample ability from those Magmadons. Getting on top of it, but it does use the top bar ability. Shields up for the Vanguard. Helps that Lance on the front line absorb 1,000 worth of damage. It does expire now, though, so we'll be taking even more damage. Flayed Dragon comes out, gets a lot of damage, and, well, the passive ability for the Flayed Dragon, causing the infest is huge. Uses the Fetid Breath, so a lot of those Lance, those uh, Exos rather go down. So the Fiends get a good surround. That's a good push, i got to say. Great usage of the Fetid Breath, and... I think the Fiends should be getting a good surround on those Exos. Just cut off the retreat a little bit. But now we start to tech it into med techs for the Vanguard. I, I would argue one of the strongest units for the Vanguard. The med tech, especially when they start to accumulate numbers. Whatever forces that the Vanguard have, they will be kept alive for a long time. The reason why it's so important is because of veterancy. The Vanguard, of course, when their units survive and they, they you know take part in combat... They get veterancy, they get XP, and the veterancy really helps out in their stats and their, the power of those units. The Metex will help them survive, of course. Heading into the 17th minute of the mark of the game. Looking to get those creep camps. Level 4 now, so... Yep, getting a lot of resources from those. Just looking to get a 6th base there on the right side. Although I say that, but the primary base has run out of Luminite, so realistically it's about 5 bases. Although the secondary has just gone out now as well, so, so that's actually the fourth base, I guess we can say now, in a way, because it's only got four Luminite nodes to really extract Luminite from. Flame Dragon on the right side, this is huge, actually. Takes out a couple of bobs, and they get converted into fiends, which then spirals things out a little bit. Takes out the uh, the habitat on the west side. He's pushing hard, Hellballs in the back line, Magnus trampling through. The Infernals using the top bar infestability, but, I mean, ultimately, those medtechs are keeping everything alive. Those Magmadons trampled through, but again, on the right side, you can see... The Medtex is just so tanky, absorbing a lot of the trample and then also healing up any of the units that are affected. Kinetic redirection coming in clutch for those Lancers. And those Magmadons, they get melted. And well, it's not looking great. I mean, he doesn't have that many bobs on the expansion on the southeast corner of the map, but that's a lot of units, I've got to say, actually. To be fair, Infernals are pushing. They're pushing hard with numbers, raw numbers. It doesn't really feel like they're winning the fights, but they just keep coming. But the units, it's kind of crazy. They are quite swarmy in that regard. And it's probably using the top bar ability to reset the, the charges. The Hellspawn Resurgence for the Infernals. And that's probably how it's getting these units out quick time. But I don't know. The thing is, a lot of the army composition he's got is a bit squishy. The Gaunts, right? They, they just, the damage output really isn't there. It's great for the infest. But the problem is, it's one thing infesting your enemy. There's another thing actually killing the enemies that are infested. And yep, yeah, imp workers. A lot of them idled. Primary and secondary base expansions have been expired. They have been expired for quite a while, though, actually. So I wonder how long this imp work has been idled. Now, one thing the Infernals can do is actually get the Flame On ability, or I think that's what it's called. Either way, they they, they Flame On those ability, the imp workers, and they can, uh, you know, self-detonate, cause some problems, that's for sure. And that might be a way to deal with the Death Ball of Vanguard units. The med techs, though... When you see them in this numbers, it's all pretty scary, actually, because they just heal up massively. And they can use Nanoswarm ability even if it doesn't need it because there aren't any mechs. But if there were mechs, they could even use Nanoswarm. On the west side, though, Magmadon's trampling through. One way to win the game could be to kill out a lot of bobs. He did actually use the, the Doombringer to, to come on in there, but the Doombringer goes down and there's no retreat, really. He's coming on the east side. Good distraction technique, though, I've got to say. Pulling the Vanguard army left, right, and center. That could be another lot of dead bob workers. Now, I wonder whether B actually does some purpose with the barracks rather than placing them nice and neatly. It actually causes a lot of choke points, which is actually not great for the Infernal Host. I think that's a very important bit of detail to actually mention in this cast. 
Man, if you play the Vanguard going up against the Infernals, that's such a, something you really want to do. Look at those Bob Workers, they're healing themselves up. They're repairing themselves. They're going to stay alive forever like that. It's such a strong ability. And unfortunately, look at the choke points. It forces the Infernals into a corner. There's no way out. Now, the Magmadon does trample through, but ultimately, so many of the units just stay alive. And the Infernal Host, not for the first time, they're going to lose their army. They're going to lose the Hellborns on the back line. And, and B could probably do this all day. Hellborn goes down. And he still has a significant standing army. Almost feels like an army that's just so difficult to stop. Speaking of which, that could be difficult to stop those number of Magmadons. They're coming in through like a train. But again, is it enough? I'm not so sure. Barracks on the west side didn't actually get fully built. Hasn't been able to wall up. It looks like it's going to wall up that area and protect that area. I think it makes sense because you can't be on all sides of the map at one time. So it makes sense to shore up one side of the map and then be able to be present on the other side. Oh, here come the infernal workers. I and mean, we talked about how they can flame on. Could possibly do it here, but unfortunately just been walled out at the worst possible time and that's good timing for B I gotta say any later could be a problem Magmadons they're trampling on through they're causing a lot of troubles to the Lancer but look how much they survive look how much they tank and there's a really weak Lancer there by the way that has got the shields up ability the imp workers flaming on but he has to do damage to the buildings break through first that is what he's doing he does get through Bob Worker's gonna try and punch and poke them but it looks like they're going to go for the main Luminite line, which makes a lot of sense. So if they're clumped up together, which they are, this could be a problem. Flame on. He does it once. Oh, wait, there's still three more. Lualis, you got to do it. Is he waiting for the other bobs? There he is. He gets so many of them. And while B now has to... I mean, to be fair, he's still got bobs there. He just needs to move them over to the Luminite line. He'd be fine. It, it feels good. It looks good. Realistically, how much damage it did, I'm not so sure. Because, you know... When you lose the Luminite lines from your primary and secondary, there's you know, 24 bobs there. Oh, a couple of imp workers didn't quite flame on. They possibly were hoping to, but they got sacrificed in a different way. Now bear in mind, losing that base on the right side for the Infernal Host is actually a big problem. He's only got two bases that he's mining out of. Having said that, I mean, to be fair, B is only mining out of two bases. Oh, three, maybe? No, two bases. Two bases. But you keep control of the others, which is important. Trying to get the west side one. Fiend's trying to break through. They will break through eventually, maybe, actually. Bit of an issue. A lot of Brutes. I mean, it's not a bad idea. It's going to give them a good front line. But the, the trouble is getting close enough to that Vanguard army. The range that they have for the Exos, by the time the Brutes even get close, a lot of the numbers would have gone down. So it feels like in this situation, the Infernal Host have to really keep up production and just try it over time. It's just like a war of attrition, right? Just try and break down the numbers as much as possible maybe get a couple of flaming imps come around on the back side maybe get a wrap around if you can you got to get on top of those uh those bundles maybe a couple of magmadons could drop in and and charge and trample all over them and if they can get the stun effect then maybe we can stop the retreat of those exos because don't forget it's not just the a range from the exos that's so important it's also their quick draw hustle uh they can just back off they're super fast gonna get base of his own now yeah so that's gonna be a third base effectively now for B. And that makes things a bit tricky. Gonna expand on the right side once again. He did lose that area earlier, of course. Fiends, though, just harassing. Gonna take out the command post, which is a good picking off, because that's another bit of Luminite that the Vanguard have to invest in order to be able to mine there effectively. And a Flayed Dragon joining the forces. It's gonna be important to help out taking out the important production buildings on the right side. So, But the attention has switched for B on the west side. And it's doing some damage of his own. That Luminite line, I don't think he can afford to lose that, actually, Lualis, because if he does, that he's going to go down to one Luminite node being mined out actively. That will not be enough. He's taking the fight. On the west side, looks like he just uh, flamed on there on the northwest, just to clear up the, uh, the Vanguard army. But ultimately, there's a new Vanguard army coming in. But I like the way he's using the fiends here. And he needs to get on top of those bob workers if he can. The Lancer will take care of the fiends pretty easily. Even with those numbers. Here comes the infest on those exos. But they back away. Well, that's going to be a good bit of damage actually. That's important. Because now B. He's lost the base on the right side. And then the southeast. He's actually only effectively mining for one Luminite node. Which is significantly less than what the Infernal hosts are doing. So this is a good, great play. He uses the abilities from the Blade Dragon as well. To recharge that white health bar on him. Got a lot of fiends. Maybe looks to get surround. Maybe he's going to take out the command post. Which actually is really important. And whilst the vanguard can power build. It's more the resources. Fetid Breath comes out. And 
will be infesting a lot of these units. But look at the quick draw hustle. It's using the medtech ability as well to make sure that they get out of there really fast. And that is System Shock. So System Shock with the medtech, it removes all positive buffs from enemy units. And it also removes all negative buffs from friendly units, including things like infest. But it also grants a bonus movement speed, which you just saw there. So if you thought quick draw hustle was fast, well, let the medtechs use the System Shock and well... The movement speed will become shocking. Yeah, I know. I had to. I had to. On the west side, though, Brutes are having to really split off because he needs to keep them alive, right? He just would have gone down anyway. At least this way he can escape with some fiends. Now, he's really starting to coop together, but it looks like he can afford another drop-off point, another control po um, yeah, command post. But uh, I like the play that Luels is doing. He's always keep trying to be present on the map, trying to harass the bob workers that are working. In the southeast, looks like the Vanguard making their way there again as well. Now it looks it looks tricky. It just feels like B always has an answer to whatever Lualis is throwing at his face. And the big thing is that that Vanguard army is staying alive. And that brings about the issue of veterancy. His units, the longer they survive, the more damage they go through, the better they get. Now he uses the shields up ability on that XO on the front line as well to absorb a lot of damage. Fetid Breath comes in from the Flayed Dragon. Oh, uses the System Shock ability trying to snipe out the Flayed Dragon. That's actually a really nice strategy. If you want to get on top of the Flayed Dragon while it's retreating, well, you can use the System Shock. And he used it there, but didn't quite kill the Flayed Dragon in the end. Pretty low on health. It's a little bit unlucky. Probably will go down with the next couple of hits, to be fair. But all of a sudden, now it's the Vanguard being aggressive. And if he spots that base expansion, it could be tricky. Because it does feel like that third base for the Infernal is going to be expiring soon. The Vanguard's already has expired. Going to take out the resource camps. and <laughs> Look how fast they move. It's actually... Oh, Flamon might be coming in from the right side. This could be big for the Infernals. Will he get it? No. It looks, it looks like the Quick Draw Hustle is going to bail him out. Yeah, the Exos just get out in, in time. And that was a big deal, by the way. Because if he landed, that could have been a big problem. Flay Dragon, just about alive. Barely alive. Going to come out on the right side. The Gaunts... I don't know how I feel about them. They got lower range than the XOs and they're a bit squishy. A couple of brutes tacking that front line, but the medtech's healing up any damage coming in. Fetid Breath gets deployed. Lancers, three of them. They'll tank a lot. Magmadon about to charge through, but the Magmadon's pretty weak. It does go down. Magmadon being sniped was absolutely huge. Fiend trying to get wrap around. Doesn't quite manage it. System Shock making the movements so fast. Fetid Breath comes out once again from the Flayed Dragon. Full white health bar on the Flayed Dragon, which is helpful. But mostly Gaunt's not much of a front line now for the Infernal Host. Not much of a front line for the Vanguard either, to be fair. Oh, looks like Frey Dragon will go down. That's massive. That is massive to lose that unit for the Infernals. Now, the issue is that the Vanguard don't actually have that many, like, offensive units. Like, there's a lot of medtechs there, not too many Exos. But ultimately, it doesn't matter, because if each Exo just never dies because of the medtech healing, it'd be absolutely fine. A decent number of workers spread out. Oh, this is not looking great. The Infernals, they're actually only actively mining with one Luminite. No, there's only 12 workers working on that. And that's not a position you want to be, especially when it's very difficult to kill off Vanguard units. The Infernal Host kind of sacrifice a lot. And if they're going to sacrifice, they need to replenish. And the way to replenish that is with Luminite. It doesn't really have it coming in. You might start to see a big push in coming in from the Vanguard. I think the time is now. Look how many units it's got. Just a sheer swarm of blue dots on the map. Those theorem workers pretty exposed, but decides not to engage just yet. Here comes a flayed dragon with a handful of infernal units. Maybe that's the final stand. Will he find a way to try and stay in the game? Now, if he can take the resource camps, it will help him the Luminite side of things. But this is a level five camp. It doesn't have that many units. He loses a couple of gaunts, loses a brute, and I mean it's expensive. He gets the Luminite eventually. He does get a couple of fiends because of it as well, which is definitely handy. But ultimately, he lost a couple of units too. It doesn't have all that many. Although, he's going to get a couple of bobs here. This is going to be helpful. Especially to considering he's getting fiends out of it. Bob's trying to retreat. Now, 3DB is still mining from two Luminite nodes. Actively, which is well, essentially double that the Infernals are. It's kind of curious though. I don't know if the Infernals actually know about that third base. It does still have Luminite in, but it's not mining. Either way. The Infernals are being pushed up back pretty heavily. Looks like they might be teeing off in the middle for a final fight. We'll have to see a lot of Exos actually come into that army. That's exactly what B needed to be able to engage. Fiend splitting off. Look at a couple of uh, those brutes, maybe. Those uh, bobs, rather. Doesn't really. Fiend's coming on the west side, so could get a couple of kills here. 
Definitely going to be helpful for the infernal cause. Right, now on the right side, fiends jumping in. And they're not going to get too much value. Medtechs. The good thing for the medtechs as well, it's not just a healing unit. They can actually attack as well. Both ground and air, by the way. Here comes Fetid Breath on those XOs. It looks like the Magmanos might be charging through, but the army's pretty split here for the Vanguard. Coming on the right side as well with another bunch of Metechs, another bunch of XOs. Oh no, he might lose that front line. Brute's getting chopped down on the retreat as well as the Magmadons. Oh, look at that. Quick draw hustle as well as the System Shock. Gap closing hugely and, well, the Metechs in such good numbers. Going to take out the Gordon numbers. The Flay Dragon trying as best as he can, but he's on his own pretty much here. And that's absolutely huge. Flay Dragon still alive swooping on out of there but just too many units the vanguard have such a strong army and lou wallace he is struggling to build up numbers again does get the fetid breath on the barbs but i think that fade dragon about to go down i think once he does go down we might just see the gg lou wallace he taps out 3db takes the game on broken crown hinterlands hope you guys enjoyed this castle game and if you did well you're definitely going to want to watch some of the other crazy games i've got i've got one with a great amount of micro from the vanguard with a very special unit if you want to check that out Click the end card on your screen right now. Otherwise, take care and see you next time.